Hey, I'm Sana, and I'm a program manager on the Visual Studio Code team. Today, we'll talk about how you can use VS Code to code together, even if you're not physically together. I remember when I was in school, and I'd get stuck on a coding assignment. I'd go to office hours to try to get help, but really that meant a bunch of us were trying to huddle around one person's computer to see what they were doing, and it wasn't an efficient way to get help. There should be an easier way to ask for help when you need it, and there is. Today, we'll talk about how you can use the live share extension in VS Code to code and collaborate together in real time. So let's get started. So I'm here in VS Code, and I've got some code in Python to print out numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. In this sequence, each number is the sum of the previous two numbers. Now, this code is mostly working, but it's not printing out the results exactly as I'd expect. And I've tried debugging this, but I think what I really need is someone to help me talk through the logic of this. So I'm going to ask my friend Ornella for help. I'm going to use the free extension in the marketplace called LiveShare to collaborate in real time with her. If I search for LiveShare, I get this LiveShare extension pack, which comes with two extensions. One is the LiveShare one, and the other adds audio calling to LiveShare. So let's install both. Once you install the LiveShare extension, it's going to add this icon to the activity bar. And then you can click on this and click on Start Collaboration Session. Now, the first time you do this, you're going to have to log in with a Microsoft or GitHub account. But once you do it, you'll get a link to a LiveShare session that you can now share with anyone you want. So now that I've got the link, I'm going to send it to my friend Ornella to help me out. <laughs> All right, I just sent it. Ornella, can you tell me what's happening on your end? So I just got the link from Senna and I already have LiveShare installed in VS Code. So I can just select Join Collaboration Session and paste in the URL that she sent me. So I'm actually joining Senna's VS Code instance and I can see her code and help her in real time. And we're in. So now I can see Senna's cursor as she's typing. What's cool about this is that even though I joined her session, I'm still in my VS Code, so I can still see my theme, my keyboard shortcuts, and my settings. We can work together, but I have all the customizations that make VS Code work best for me. So Sana, tell me what's going on with your code. Okay, let me show you what's happening on my end. So I can go to the live share icon there and see that you've joined my session. I can right click on your name and follow participant. So this way I can follow your cursor if it goes to different files or different line numbers. I can also share the Python terminal with you. So right now you can see it's read only, but let me give you read write access. This way you can access my terminal and also send commands to it. I can also use a new channel to communicate with you. All right, but let me show you what's actually happening with my code. So I can run this code and show you that I'm seeing some negative numbers in my results. So let's print the first five digits. And I know I shouldn't be seeing negative numbers, but I would, don't really know what's happening, so can you help me like walk through the logic? Yeah, so you definitely shouldn't be seeing negative numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, so let's just start out by typing the first couple digits in the Fibonacci sequence. So 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. Um, so let's take a look at your code, and particularly let's look at this if statement. What you're saying here is that if n is less than 1, return n. Is there anything about this statement that could be, you know, incorrect based on the sequence that I've typed out in the comment? Yeah, so in the comment you typed that the first zero and one digits uh, return the same number, but I guess in the if statement, uh, if n is less than one, that only looks at zero and not one. So maybe I need to change the if statement to if n is less than or equal to one, and that will include both one, zero and one. Okay, let's try that. Let's run it and see what happens. So now let's print the first five digits again. Oh, nice, it worked. Okay, uh, let's try that once more. Let's put another number. Um, let's run it with say the first um, 12 digits now. Okay, cool. First 12 digits of the Fibonacci sequence. Thank you so much. Yeah, glad I could help. See you later. We heard from educators and instructors that projecting your code or sharing your code while you teach can get really difficult. So using the LiveShare extension, you can click on Start Read-Only Collaboration Session, and this will create a LiveShare link that you can share with up to 30 people and gives them read-only access to your session. You can change that to Make Read Write if you want them to edit your code while you teach, 
but this is really great for classroom scenarios, especially with remote teaching. So as you can see, the LiveShare extension makes pair programming, group projects, and remote teaching and classroom scenarios a lot easier and way more fun and interactive. So install the LiveShare extension today and let us know how it works for you and give us feedback. We hope you enjoy the experience and happy coding.